All right, today is part three of the content creation dashboard in Notion. So we're talking, how can you use Notion as a content creator and get the most out of it? Now, in the first part, we talked about setting up your initial content database. And the second part, we talked about connecting tasks, which I have a correction coming up. And now today, I want to spend some time thinking about how we can start to take it to the next level with related information. So if you are creating content, there's a good chance that you have other things that are going on, whether that is a collaboration with another creator. Maybe if you're making videos, you have B-roll or music that you want to keep track of. Perhaps you have sponsors who are going to sponsor some of your content and you want to keep track not only of the sponsors, but maybe the contracts that you have with them. And even something as simple as social media which I actually consider a separate thing than regular content. Now, if your content is primarily social media posts, then that's different. But I'm talking about people who are creating the original content somewhere else, like a video, a podcast, a blog post, and then you want to promote that using social media. That's related, but it's not the same. And so we will talk about how you can both set up relations, but also, there are other alternatives for how you can organize some different aspects of your work. And I'll talk about those different options. So that is what we are going to talk about. And I see principles for success. Excited for part three. I'm so glad. Um, I'm also excited for it. And I'm excited to correct the little misleading information that I gave you last week. Now, if you are new and you've never met me before, my name is Kat and my typical content is around presenting online, like Zoom presentations, being more engaging, etc. But I love Notion and I do not hide that. So this series on Notion for content creation is just an area that I'm passionate about. So I want to be able to share how Notion keeps me sane as a regular content creator. Okay, so first I wanna get into the misleading sort of mistake that I made. And I learned this through my own, <laughs> through my own workflow. I noticed a friction point, and this might've even come up last time. And I'm going to explain what the correction is and how to correct it. So if you took part or watched part two, of the content creation, I was showing you how you can organize your content tasks. And in fact, by the end of it, we had this little contest, content tasks area where I had a task database that's connected to the content. So here you can see an example of how we have the different tasks that are grouped in a way that logical for me and then related to content. And this can always look different for you. And then under content, we have, this is an example of upcoming content. So what I had shared with you is a few different ways to organize this. And one of the ways to organize it is to have this template button where every time you press it, you have new recurring tasks. So when I press that button, I will see a new set. I'm copying these tasks and then I can drag them into this database and I can have this database filtered so that I am only looking at, do I have the filtered view? Yeah, by content. So here we had this little filter and I said, okay, I'm doing a video about a certain thing. So if I'm doing this video on meal planning and I choose meal planning and I drag these over, they take on the properties. So if I click on this, now this is connected to that content, which is a great trick. Then though, I shared that there's another way to do this, which is to set up a template with those recurring tasks. So over here, this is my content database. And the other one down there was also my content. No, that was my task. So this is the content <laughs> database. So if I click on here, I had set up in the template. So if we open this template and say, edit this template, we have a new YouTube live stream and I added the tasks in here. And the error that I made is that these should actually be in the template button so that I'm creating a new fresh copy of these tasks every time. What happens is right now, I just have these, these are pages, but because they were created and manipulated in a database, they're gonna hold on to some of those properties. And so what can happen is if I have a new template for a new video and I drag say prep live stream into this, the, the, this is the template. If I drag that in, um, it's going to take on that video, but it might also hang on to some old videos. So if you had tried setting this up and you think, 
why why is this happening why like if i have prep and create assets more than one video is coming up and it's because they're they're sort of hanging on so you want to make a copy so the way that we fix this is we want to send that template button so the first thing you can do outside of your template is decide what are my recurring content tasks. So, so this is an example where I have recurring content tasks. This happens to be related to a live stream. So this button, if you and if you don't know how to do this, you can go back and watch part two, but this button has different tasks. So you can go in here, you can manipulate these, kind of edit them, change them, make them how you want. And once you have this template button updated, you can then, I, I'm gonna make a copy so you can either click duplicate and make a copy of this button um, or you could drag if you press down option or alt and you drag it down that's another way to make a copy of the button uh, the template button and then we're going to move it so i've made this copy here i'm going to say move to and i will start typing i believe i called it new live stream yeah so the name of my template is new YouTube live stream. If I now click on this, that third one has disappeared. And if I go back up to my template, new YouTube live stream, and I click edit, now it'll be at the bottom. So let's collapse this toggle. Now you see there's recurring content tasks. So I'm gonna drop this in the tasks toggle. Let's open this task list. I'm actually going to delete these four because I don't want the, to use them. I'm going to use the button and I'm going to drag this button block up above the calendar here. So now what will happen is if I've got this template button. It has my recurring tasks. We're going to go back. And so now let's just pretend we are creating a brand new video. So I'm going to say, or a new live stream, I'm going to say new live stream. Maybe I call this, um, Notion part part five, that's not a thing. I'm not doing part five, but Notion part five is my stream. And when I toggle down tasks, I've got this button now. If I click this button, it will then populate these tasks and then I will drag these tasks in here. And because of the filter, it will all be connected to Notion part five. So we really hope that that makes sense. If you've been following along, if you did watch part two and now you're coming back, let me know in the chat if this makes sense to you. We, we want to make a new copy of these each time so they are not connected. You're not picking up extra content because that was happening to me. And this is the fix. It's because I was just basically that same action was connecting across each template. I don't want that to happen. So I'm basically creating a new version of it and then putting that in there. Okay, and Monica says, that totally makes sense. Okay, great. It's nice to have you with me, Monica. And Patrick, hello. Um, so that's my fix. I'm gonna delete these, these tasks and actually I'm gonna delete this sample. So that's my correction. I wanted to make sure that I shared that. Okay, next on the docket, this is what today's focused on. Let's go over to my part one, two, three. So in part, three this is where it looks like a small looks like a small amount of topics but in actual fact this is something that takes a little bit of time to wrap your head around and we want to talk about relationships and i said related databases but it's more than that because sometimes it will make more sense for us to use say a tag rather than have a full database of other information so we're going to talk about relationships versus tags but there are going to be times when you have a related database, it makes perfect sense, we wanna link them. And an example of a related database is that task database that we set up last week. It's related to the content, so now you can see the task and the content together. And when you look at the content, you'll see all the tasks. If you look at the task, you'll see the content. So it's a, this two-way relationship. When it comes to other things about your content, that's where you want to ask the question, should this live in a separate database or is this something that I don't actually need a full on database and I can actually just include this in my content database. So we'll give a few examples of that. And one of the ones that I personally think is, I, I think of it as separate is social media. So let's create a new page. Now a quirk, and there are probably people who know Notion a little bit better than me. When you have a page here at the top, 
which by the way, I'm going to change this content task. I'm going to add a little icon here. Let's do, let's just do another check mark. Um, we'll do that one. So I have a page here. If you click on this, it's going to take you to the next page, but I want to have a blank block underneath it. So what I usually do is just go to the next block below. So it's scheduled content and I just click enter and then I go up one and then I have a new one. So I'm going to create a social media. Um, social media will be its own database <laughs> that I can organize my social media that's connected, sort of like tasks are connected to my content. But some of the other ones that I want to talk about today, and I'm just going to list them down. So let's also, for someone who's making edited videos, they likely want to have a B-roll database. Another is that, let's say you have guests, whether you have guests on videos, or maybe if you have a blog post or you have a podcast, you might have guests that are contributing to your, um, your content. That's an example of another thing that you might want to track. Another area that I want to talk about is um, like resources and I'm going to say CTAs, call to actions. And, and we're going to talk or call to action. <laughs> so we're going to talk about how you can kind of organize these and whether it makes sense for you to use a separate database or whether it makes sense for you to just include this in your content database as a tag. So let's, okay, let's, I had one other one, I think as an example, let me make sure that I get them all. Um, we've got our guests, we've got our B-roll, we've got our call to action. And is there anything else? Let's do another example with music. This might be relevant for podcasts and videos where you might have music. And yeah, let's, we can just stop there. So what I've done is I've created, I've kind of jotted down all the different areas that I probably want to track with this content. And what I'm going to do is a little hack where I just grab them all and I am going to turn them into pages. So now I've created a new page for each of these. And then we can decide how we want to set these up. So for social media, now let's go into our social media page that we just created. As I mentioned in part one, you can either make this entire thing one database or on this data, on this page, you can have a, um, you can have just a page where you have a combination of text and you have a combination of an, maybe an inline database. Now in this example, I'm actually just going to create a database. So this entire page is going to be a social media database. And in my case, I'm going to pick a calendar view because this is like an editorial content calendar, usually when you're, when you're organizing your social media, but I can show you on a separate page, how you can organize that, how you can brainstorm. Maybe you just want to throw some ideas out there for social media. So similar to our content, there are ways that you can just add new things without assigning them to a date. I wouldn't do it on this page. We would probably create a separate page to kind of plan. How are we going to promote our content? So maybe we have a page called, you know, content promotion. But on this social media page, what we're going to do is set up some properties. So properties, as you might remember, you can either, if because this is a full calendar, I can click on properties and I could just start adding and editing them up here, or I can actually just create one and start adding the properties in here. So in social media, we obviously want to have a date because we want to know when that is going to be published or when we did publish it. Maybe a tag here, we can call this, um, you know, platform or channel, and this can be a multi-select. So this could be, you know, a Facebook post. We can have a, uh, maybe Twitter post. We can have Instagram post or no, just Instagram. Um, although here you could have Instagram story, Instagram, uh, here we go. So Instagram post. So maybe you can have different ones. So that's an example. You don't have to get, I, I'm not going to get into the weeds about that, but it's possible that you write the same thing and they go on too. So maybe an example could be that your post on Instagram is the same as your post on Facebook. So you want to have this probably as a multi-select. And then one of the things that we want to do, so you can have all the other things. So maybe you have caption, which would just be a text field. So you, you can have a copy of your caption. Maybe here you want to have hashtags. If you're using hashtags, that can just be a text field. 
Um, there are there are some creative ways that people have got their hashtags, and uh, but we're not going to go into super detail today. Um, that's more of a taking it to the next level. But let's create a relationship. So we know we have a content database. So let's I'm going to call this related content. And you don't always have to have content. Sometimes you just post to social and it's not about content. But when you are, you want to make sure they're connected. So let's create a relationship. So here we pick relation and then it'll have us choose. So which one we're going to pick content, create that relation. And now when we are putting together our post, so maybe I say, you know, promote live stream. And you could actually say the name of the live stream you're promoting and then I can pick it. So maybe I'm going to, this is all about this habit tracking and notion. Now I've got this content related. The other thing you can do is you can add social icons. So I actually have, I like to create templates as you're probably aware. Um, so you can add a content by uploading an image or you can link to something. So let's actually do an example. I'm just going to upload because I know I have social images. So I did in my notion icons, I have a uh, social and here this is, let's say that this is a Facebook post. I can now say that this is a Facebook post. This is more than one. So you could have icons that are separate. You can play, do whatever you want, but having a template is nice because if you say new Facebook post, new tweet, new Instagram post, you can have the icons already set up, or maybe you have one where it's just promoting all of them, or you could actually, let's say we just look in here and we do, oh, what's that called? Is it a megaphone? <laughs> what's the little horn called? A Anyone remember while I awkwardly look at this when you're announcing something? Here we go. Maybe you want to have this. There we go. Oh, did I hit 2000 subs? That is really exciting. Thank you for letting me know that. Um, oh, I knew I was close, but thank you very much. Uh, I love all of the support from everyone. So yeah, it's a megaphone. So you could have something like this. So you can just play around with it. But the point is right now, now I have, a, now I would probably want to use a description, but this is just an example of how to organize your information. I personally think you would want a social media database and that would be separate from your content because the content is sort of the original thing, just like if you have a podcast, blog, whatever, and then social media is where you tell people about it. But you can also just have other things that you share. And with the Notion API that came out very recently, the beta, you can also automatically send your social media either from Notion to the social platform using things like um, Zapier or automate.io, I believe, works integrates with social media, or you can have it come in. Like let's say, so I tried something where I set up that if I tweeted something, a copy of it would be sent to my Notion so I could keep track. So that's if you're a little bit more on the fly and you like to just make something up and send it, then it will just keep a copy in your database and you can have a copy of the link. So let's actually add that as a property. So let's say we want link and we want to be able to actually link out to that post and so we can see it and we can get it. And maybe let's also add file because it's a very good chance that you're going to have media attached to this, whether this is a photo that you made or this is maybe a thumbnail that you're sharing. But if your post has an image, you want to be able to attach that file or files in here. Maybe you don't and that's totally okay, but it, you want to have that option. So that's one. Hi, Shana. Thanks so much for joining. So this is social media. So that's one example. Let's go back to the dashboard and let's look at an example of B-roll. So if you are making videos that are edited where you're going to have that B-roll interspersed, so maybe you're talking, but then you show typing at a keyboard, or if you're talking about a specific thing, you can show a shot of the thing that you're talking about in your video. So this is an example where, again, we might want to have a full database. In this case, I actually think a table view would work really well because you probably want to see information at a glance. And I did take some notes so I can <laughs> make sure I give you a good example of B-roll. So here you might have the actual name of the B-roll. Here you might want to say, let's say the location. So maybe it's indoors, outdoors, etc. 
maybe you want to say time of day if you are shooting outside, outside, inside, etc. Um, you can say time of day. Now this would actually be, you can only, if you have a shot of something, it's probably only happening at one time of the day. So this would be a select. So maybe you have, you know, morning light um, or morning, maybe you have daytime and then you have nighttime. So this would just be an example. Is it nighttime with two T's? And it's nighttime. <laughs> so this is where you might want to track it. And you have to ask yourself, what am I actually um, showing? And so maybe let's say you talk about tech on your channel. You could have a little column called tech and this could be a multi-select. So perhaps you have your iPhone in that shot. Maybe you have a desktop. Um, maybe you are showing lighting whatever it is that you talk about, this is the type of thing that you can add to a database so that you can sort and filter and be able to find stuff quickly. And this is where these tags, so all three of these are tags, and this allows you to sort or filter so that you could create another view really easily. Let's actually use another example. I'm gonna add camera, meaning the camera you used to shoot that, because maybe you want to be able to reference that or share something about it, or you just want to know which camera did you use to shoot that. This would be a single select because you can only film one thing with one camera at a time. Um, so maybe I have a GoPro and I also have let's say a Sony, or maybe I also just have my iPhone. So that's another example where you can capture, okay, what did I actually do? And let sound. So does this have sound or not? This could be a yes, no. So just a checkbox. Does the clip include sound? Does it not include sound? And um, what's this example? I didn't have. Okay. And then let's create a relationship. So you can, you can put whatever properties you want to track, however you want to organize and sort and filter your, your information, but let's create the relationship. And we are going to say related content, or you could just write content um, and here we want a relation. We are going to pick our content database. We create that relation. And now if we say, you know, typing at desk, the location is my office, the time of day, it's daytime, that might not matter in this example. Um, maybe I am showing my desktop here. I shot it with my iPhone. There's no sound and the related content is talking about habit tracking. So now I can see information about this and just on the whole idea of should I have a separate database or not? This is a great example where if you want to be able to organize that information on its own, yes, you should have a separate database for that. B-roll is a great example. If you are putting together and editing videos, yeah, you probably want to be able to capture this so that if you are working on a new project and you say, you know what, I need to see which stuff I have that was shows my desktop or maybe I only need to see things that show my phone or me typing on my phone, you can quickly go and search this really easily and you could see which videos are do I have where I am showing that. And so you could easily go and see maybe for this one, filtered views, there's a shot of me using my iPhone, but for habit tracking, there's desktop. Hopefully that makes sense. And I see down here in the chat, uh, Patrick, my custom API update. I'm a week or two away from finishing an initial custom WordPress plugin to display Notion content. <gasps> That's exciting. Patrick, let us know. <laughs> I would love to hear about that. Um, so here's, here's an example of a B roll one. So what happens when we create a relationship? And I think I showed this last week, but when you have a relationship, now, if we open anything in our content database, you will see all of these related ones show up and it defaults to saying related to B roll. So maybe I would actually change this to just say B roll because I don't need to say related B roll. I would just say B roll. And here, instead of related to social media, I could just say social media and just clean it up. So it will always make a, it will add, you add it in one database, but it will automatically populate in the other database. So um, here's an example. I didn't actually name this one, but if we go to my habit tracking 
and open up this one, we can see there's social media about this and the B-roll that I have included in this video is that I am typing at my desk. So that is a great example. Hey doc, nice to, nice to have you joining. Um, so this is where you're starting to see that you've got related information, but this is the type of information that you would want to see, organize, filter, or maybe work on separately. And so you want it to live in a separate database. Now let's say, let's do Let's think about a different concept. So up on the top here, another area I thought about was music. So music is one where I don't necessarily need to have a database that lists the song, the type of music it is, et cetera. Maybe I do. Maybe I want to have a database of the, the, the music that I like to use for my podcast or for my videos and I have a list of it and I've got some information. Or maybe I just know that there are a few different types of songs that I like to use and incorporate. So this is where you decide as a content creator, do I want to have a separate database or is this something where I just want to be able to sort and filter my content and see that music? So let's just say that you are realize I don't need a whole table of music. I'm probably not gonna use it. I'm probably not gonna go and refer to it. And that's okay. So if that's your case, maybe you go into your, your content. Let's just open a piece of content and I'm going to add a property called music. And this one, I am going to create a multi-select because you might use more than one piece of music in your content. And so <laughs> I'm going to just make up some songs. Let's, let's say one is called ocean waves. And there's another one that's called um, <laughs> Funky Beats. This is really not my forte. Um, so you have, and then maybe you have like chill vibes. <laughs> and these are the names of your songs. So in this video, maybe I just am using Funky Beats. That's the only thing here. And let's actually, I'm going to change this view and go into a table view. And let's just add some music to some of these. Uh, so music is now down here. So let's just, oh wait, first let's see uh, videos. I just want to look at videos. So let's say that these three videos, I'm going to edit the property for music and these three are using ocean waves and maybe these three going to edit the property for music and these ones have funky beats <laughs> and these ones have the property for music of what chill vibe I don't remember which ones I did anyhow doesn't matter the point is now I want to create a view maybe where I say this is a new view and I just want to see a table where this view is called music oh wait no I did that wrong I want it to be a board view there we go. It's a board view for music. And now when I group this board view, I can group by music. So now I can see which things don't have music. Obviously those are blog posts. So let's say the filter is where type is, or I'm going to say type is not a blog. And this doesn't have any music, but maybe then maybe it doesn't have music and that's okay. So we have a category called no music and then we can see which videos have ocean waves, funky beats and chill vibes. So this is an example where using a tag might help me if I want to at a glance, see exactly which content is using which music. And I don't necessarily need a separate database, but let's say that you actually do want a music database. You could create a page here where you have um, a list, a table, a board. So maybe it's, I, let's pick a board view where this property, so let's edit this property. So we have a status property and this I'm actually going to change instead of not started progress complete, I'm going to change not started to chill. <laughs> um, and I'm going to have one that's called more upbeat. And then I'm going to have another one that's, let's go with funky. Um, and so you can keep, you can do this however you want. But what I've done now is I've created this board where uh, you can start to have your music organized 
by the type of music. So if you're trying to pick something, that's easier to do. And let's say you want to add a property called source because you are probably getting your music from somewhere. And this one, I'm going to say a single select. And let's say one of your sources is epidemic sound. Hopefully I'm spelling that right, which is for um, getting music. So you pay epidemic sound and you can use that music. Or also there's stream beats. Not sure if it's one word or not. I apologize if I'm getting that wrong. So stream beats is another area. Also, so some of my music is actually from the YouTube free library because they have uh, a list of royalty or copyright free music that you can use. There's also a Facebook music library for that's all free, royalty free. So this is an example where you can have, what is the source of the music? What is the type of music? And I'm gonna change this to um, type or you could change however you want. And so now what I'm doing is I am starting to organize this information and see information. And you could also create a new view where I have maybe another board view. This one will be by source. It's a board view. Let's create that. And we're gonna change the group to source. And now we can see the different sources of where the music's from. Maybe this one's from Epidemic Sound and this one's from Stream Beats. And so when we open this, we can see the type of music it is, the Stream Beats. But let's now connect this. So we'll say content. This is a related database. We're gonna pick our content database, create that relationship. And so now we can say this chill music is used in the filtered views um, video. And when we go back to our content and I go to, um, let's just do a simple list view and I want my filtered views. I can now see, so we do have this tag. You could also keep that tag. You can keep a tag and a relationship. I'm going to clean up this name and just say music. Oh, music. So when I have a tag and music, I will say music rd meaning related database and then press enter so there are times where i do actually have more than one property for example in my library because i have a library of sources and podcasts and articles and resources and books and courses i have a tag for what is this about is this about productivity about habits um, about live streaming but I also have a tag database. And so yes, I am doing work kind of twice, but this helps me to do a board view, to organize, to sort really easily. A relationship on its own, you cannot do a board view. I hope that makes sense. So if I, if I just have a relationship, so right now we have social media as a relationship. If I wanted to see a board view of my content by where the social media is posted, I can't do that because I do not have the select. So the ways that you can group are using the select, the single select, the multi-select, or who something is assigned to. Those are the ways you can group your information in a board view. You cannot group your information with a relationship. Now, what you can do is create a view. Let's say I create a new view um, where the relationship is, now I don't have a lot of information here, but where the relationship is um, using my B-roll, uh, B-roll desk. I just want to see all of the videos where I've got B-roll of my desk. I say that I want to create that. And here I would go and filter and add the filter where this B-roll contains typing at desk. So this is one way I can use that. And every time you create a new view, remember that it's going to be in alphabetical order. So if you don't want this to be showing up, you can always open your properties. You can turn off the things that you don't need. I actually don't need to see B-roll because I know everything in here is going to be the typing at desk B-roll. Um, so I can start to you know, get rid of some of these things that I don't wanna see. Or if I want the status of this video to be up at the top, I can move those around. So I know that I've got this habit tracking, B-roll, this one maybe I'm in editing, and um, this has B-roll as a desk. So that's a way 
that you can use your related column, that related property to filter something, but you cannot create a board view using a related database. And so that's really my big uh, point with this is when you're trying to decide how do I want to classify something and like music or even B-roll, maybe you want to actually add instead of just having B-roll, possibly you want to add a new property that has a drop down of all your different types of B-roll. Or maybe you don't need a table about B-roll at all and you can just have a drop down. Which brings me to the, to the sample of call to actions. So I recently saw an example where the call to action, meaning you have a piece of content and at the end of that content, or maybe at the start, you are asking your audience to take action. And so the call to action, you could, and the best practice for call to action is to only have one per piece of content. So let's say we have this and maybe for, and if we take a, a look at this fake persona who is making content on Notion. So maybe you have a free content creation template, which I actually do have, and it's linked below. So I have a free content creation um, template. So maybe that's one call to action that I might say. Maybe I also have a habit tracking template and I can have that as a call to action. Maybe I have a community um, for that I want to ask people to join. Maybe I have a workshop that I want people to join. So here's an example where a call to action is connected to your different videos and you might want to be able to see all of these call to actions in a way where you can organize it. So that if I said, I want a new, um, create a new view, this one will be CTAs and it's a board view. And then when we go to group this board view, group by, we're gonna say call to action. So now I can see maybe in this, this video, I talked about my um, free template. And in this one, the API, I invited people to join the community so we can talk about the API. So you can see how it would be useful to have using that single select. Does that make sense? I hope. The not so big persona. Mm -hmm. Um, so Patrick is saying, can you select more than one relation per item? Yes, you can. Yeah, that's a great example. So, or yes. <laughs> so let's say that, what are my relationships? So I've got social media. So let's go to the social media right now. We have, um, so there are two examples in this, in this example, promote live stream. I only have one piece of content cause I'm only relating one thing but maybe I also have a tweet. So on that same day, I have a tweet about live stream. I wouldn't call this that, but tweet about live stream, related content. Um, maybe I have, and what was it? The habit tracking? Habit tracking, here we go. So I'm gonna add that. Now I could add, maybe I actually am going to add something else. So I could add more than one. Let's just, I'll just show you an example. I could actually add all that content and say tweet. This is not a great example, but it is does answer your question. Yes, you can answer. You can have more than one thing. And if you say, no, actually, that's not right. You can just go in and you can just X these out and take them away. But if we click on this, because you can jump from thing to thing. So now that this is related, I can actually click on this piece of content. I've now opened this piece of content and I can see that there's more than one social media about this because I have my Facebook and Instagram post, which is the same one on two platforms. And I have tweet about live stream. And if we actually go to this Twitter one, we can say this is on Twitter and we can have a link to the tweet, etc. So that is an example of how you can have more than one. Um, okay. Oh, <laughs> I'm a little bit late to this. I see Patrick said, don't forget about that other great hit notion queen. <laughs> Um, okay. So, oh, I see I'm a little, I'm just scrolling back a little and I am seeing Doc saying installing Notion on the M1 iPad Pro. Oh, the new one. You got it. Oh, that's exciting. Do you, do you like it? I'd love to hear what you think of the new iPad Pro. That's exciting. And I would love to hear how your Notion experience is on the iPad Pro because my, my iPad experience with Notion not my favorite way to navigate. Maybe if I was using a stylus, 
I don't know if the iPad Pro, if that one comes with a stylus. Um, so please share when you have some stuff to share. So now let's look at guests. And actually, I want to show you something cool with guests. Let's create a little guest database. So I am going to use, um, maybe let's use a gallery. Let's have some fun with this. So we have a gallery view. It always defaults that you have a to-do list in it and it always defaults to having the date that you created it and the tags. I don't need the date I created the guest, so I'm going to delete that property. And I am, I don't know if I need the tags, but let's just say, so this will be the name of the guest. Um, so let's put Doc as an example. So maybe I want to have him on here and tell, he can share his experience about Notion on his iPad Pro. So here, here he is, he's my guest, and maybe I want to add a cover and I can actually find a picture of his channel, let's say. We're just going to pretend that this is his channel. It's not <laughs> for adding an icon. Let's actually do this. I'm going to open, I'm going to open a, a browser real quick. I'm going to find a picture. Oh, doc. Um, oh, it opened on this page. I don't want it to be there. Let's just, okay, hold on. I'm going to flip here for a second while I've cleaned this up and look for a photo. <laughs> Um, and I'm using Doc because I was a guest on his show and got to talk about Notion. So let's grab video. I hope this isn't creeping anyone out. I'm going to copy the link address. So I've just looked up a picture. I'm copying the link address. I'm going to go back in here. We're going to go to this icon. We'll say link. I'm going to paste this link. And now we pull up the little icon image here, which is, I think, for guests, it's really fun to be able to have the face of the guest. And I don't have a to-do list for my guest. You could have some notes here. Uh, maybe I wanna have the website for my guests available if I wanna link that in a description. So I have the URL here. Perhaps I wanna have you know, the YouTube channel for my guests if I'm having them on YouTube and I wanna promote them so I can have the URL here. Maybe they have you know their Instagram, et cetera. So you can set these up so that you have information about your guest. Maybe you also have, you know, uh, topics that they discuss and that could be a multi-select. So I know here that, you know, Doc knows a lot about tech and about live streaming. So that's an example where I can have information about, and actually I kind of just took the tag one, so I'm just gonna delete that property. So you can have information about your guest. Maybe they send you you know, short bio where you ask them and that's a text property. So you can have all of that there. Maybe you want to have a title. What is their actual title? What do they like to be called? So you can have that. So you can set up your guest or your collaboration uh, database. And this is an example where you absolutely probably want a database. You don't just want a drop down of your guests. You probably want some information about them so that you can come back to that. And um, here, if we did have their page, you could have it show up here. So this is where you can have your different guests. So let's say that, and now we want to link this. So let's relate this to our content. And again, we just go down to relation. We're going to pick our content, create relation. And maybe I know that Doc is going to be on my Notion versus ClickUp because I know that he uses ClickUp and I want him to come on and actually talk about it. So this is an example where I've now got this. If I click on Notion versus ClickUp, I can now see that he's the guest that is related. And I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. So hopefully this is giving you some ideas of how you can really start to like level up your content. And the cool thing, if we actually go to our content page, which by the way, we can clean this up so that it's not all, this is really, <laughs> this is bothering me how this looks right now. But when you are building pages, don't let that get to you. You wanna be able to um, <laughs> fix that. So let's go to my main calendar. This is my primary view that I like. It's like a publication schedule. And the ClickUp one, did we plan that? What date is that on? It's in here, Notion versus ClickUp. So what we can do on the properties is we could actually say on our properties, we wanna see the guests. 
Now, I only have one episode where I have a guest and that's okay, but now I can actually see the little icon and who the guest is directly on my content. The exact same thing works for sponsorship. So if you have sponsors, you can have a sponsors table, you can have their icon, which you can just grab from a website. You can have information about the sponsorship. You could have the contract maybe. Now that could live in the actual video if you have a specific contract that you signed with a sponsor, or maybe you have a sponsorship deal with an ongoing relationship that would live in your sponsor database connected to that sponsor. So really what you're trying to do is figure out how all of this stuff fits together. Hopefully that makes sense. I need to take a sip of water. Hey, Sammy, nice to see you. Sammy, have you tried Notion? I'm curious. I know I talk about it all the time. Um, Marcus says you'll sponsor the next one. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Send over the contract and I'll add it to my database. So this is, I think this is a really cool example and maybe, and, and actually just as I am going to turn off the thumbnail Where's my thumbnail? So turn that off. So maybe I just want to have the status and there, and maybe I don't even want the status on here. I just want to see all my content and, but maybe I want to see the actual type. No, I want to see the, what is it called? Where is that? I want to see if it's a live stream or not. What did I call that? <laughs> this, oh no, that is the type. Yeah. Is it a live stream? Is it a blog? Maybe I want that to be showing. I think that would be helpful and obvious. Um, hey, Rich, nice nice to see you here. And Sammy, I should test it out. I see you talk about it all the time. So you don't, I, I really, I'm a pusher. So you do not have to try it if you do not want to, unless you think it is cool. But uh, I don't want anyone to be feel forced to use a new tool, especially if you've got something that works for you. Okay, so I hope that that makes sense around relationships versus tags. The other option that you have to connect information is you can actually mention it. You don't even have to set up a relationship property. So let's say, let's go into resources and call to actions. So right now I don't have a relationship with resources and call to actions. Um, and, and with this area, maybe I wanna have a database, maybe I just have a page where I have different information about these. I am going to set up a table because if you have stuff that you are making available to people, so let's say as the example, we've got the free content creation template is a great example of a resources or call to action, something that I would direct someone to. And I want to have the link to it. So this would be, I would call this link, like where do they actually find it? What am I gonna put on my website when I tell direct people to it? Maybe I have, um, you know, a graphic for this. Do I have an asset or a graphic that I'm using? This could maybe be a multi-select where perhaps I have um, like a an image that I can have about that or maybe I actually have an animated overlay about this call to action. So I can kind of create those. I also, um, you can say the type. So what is it? And this could be an example for this person it could be template, um, maybe it's a PDF download, um, maybe it is a website with some information on it, whatever that is. Maybe I'm calling people to a sales page to register for something. So you can, you can play around with what's the actual thing that I am sending to pe people to. And maybe I have just a short description of what it actually is. So that could be a text column. So here's an example where I have my resources. Let's put another one where perhaps I have a, a workshop. And what was another one? The habit tracker, I think, was another example I came up with. So here we have a database that's got some of the resources, maybe has some of the call to actions. You can decide exactly how you are going to have this. Maybe you actually just have an email list um, landing page that you want to direct people to. You can do that. By the way, in the description, I have a Notion email list now. So you can have your content, your description, your graphics, your types. You, you could link this if you want to. One of the things that starts to happen is if you have, if I just open here, you can start to see how you get property creep. 
where because I have all these different things I've been tracking and now I'm adding all, every, every single arrow is a relationship and it's starting to get really long. And sometimes this makes sense and you're just going to have a lot of properties and that is okay. Other times you might wanna have different, um, different ways of connecting content. So maybe in this habit tracking video, I have a description um, of, you know, showing how to track habits with Notion and link to the, this is where I do at, and I start to say Notion, did I, what did I, no, I called it habit tracker, I think. Habit, yeah, habit tracker template, here we go. So I can actually click and link to it. So now I have actually created a relationship, but just not a not a formal relationship. But when I have this open, I could say, oh yeah, I am talking about my tracker template and I just click on this and I can open the information. I can get the details, I can get the link and I can go back to that page. The other thing you could do is instead of a, you could add another property and maybe the property. So instead of, let's say call to action is not these, but it's actually just text box, you could then just add the property there. So this is another way that you can connect your information across different pages and databases, and you don't have to worry about creating a formal relationship because that will create something in there. So if I go, if I go into Habit Tracker, there's no link directly to it, but you will see a backlink. So anytime you've mentioned a page, in another area, you'll see a backlink. So I'll see habit tracker template. Oh, I've got a backlink here and I can click on this and I can see when I have mentioned the habit tracker template. So let's actually go back and pick another one. Maybe because people use Asana for, maybe they use it for habits. I don't know, I'm just making this up. In this description, maybe I talk about comparing, you know, comparing the two and I say link to habit tracker template. Now, if I go into that habit tracker template, I can see there are two backlinks. So now I can click on this and I can see every time that I have mentioned the habit tracker template. So that is another option for you that's really easy. You can even do it in the title. So let's go back to, um, we've got a blog post. So maybe this is about habit tracking in Notion and we want to talk about the habit track, tra habit tracker. Wait, where did it go? There we go. Habit tracker template. So now it's actually in the title and that works as well. So when you see this content, um, so let's actually look at it in a list view and I've got habit tracking and the habit tracker template. So you'll see it show up here. And if I click on it, it will open. Now there are three backlinks and I can see every time that I've mentioned the template. Hopefully that works. Okay, I'm gonna take a look at the chat, just make sure I'm not missing anything. Uh, Marcus says, I am still afraid of spending too much time with it. That's that's a justifiable fear. And that's where those boundaries come into play. I assume you're talking about Notion. Um, and Marcus is saying, will you do the habit tracker? This is an example. Oh, I don't actually have one. I have tried habit tracking in Notion um, and it can be effective for some people. For I am a type of person who it really has to be hyper specific um, and then I'll do it. Otherwise, I actually just find it's an extra thing that I don't actually need to do. So it really depends on you, but I'm not gonna, I don't actually have an official habit tracker template. Um, hi, Einar, nice to see you. And let's see, informal, yeah. So I would love to hear what you think of the the types of relationships. So the three that you can, that I talked about, um, is that, or was it the three, the ways that you can relate information is you can have, just have a column where you're tracking that information. Like we showed when we go into our content and you can see that we've got drop downs, like a call to action here or our music that way. So that's one way to get organized with information. The other is having these relationships. And then the final one is just mentioning something and you don't have to mention it up here. You could actually mention it down in the body. So let's say here I say, you know, habit tracking template. Now, if I open, so it's in the content, it's in the body. And if I click on it, you'll see four backlinks. And now we can see that it's showing all the different ways that it was mentioned before. 
Um, okay, so um, Cindy, yeah, hi, Cindy. I, yeah, dive deep into Notion spring of 2020 and reaping the rewards. There is an investment of time. And, but I do, I do find like this is legitimately helping me be more productive and feeling more organized and more in control of stuff. There are still things that I have not. So for example, my social media <laughs> sucks. I like when I changed my content direction, I fell completely off. Now, part of that is I haven't fully adjusted to what is the type of thing I would put in, say, an Instagram post before with my old content. It was a lot easier with this content. Maybe it is, quote unquote, easy, but I haven't sat down to get clarity on what that looks like. So I haven't I haven't purposely sat down and figured that out. That is a, a friction point of mind. The other is that I personally do find getting regular content out there on YouTube is it takes up time and I do have other responsibilities in my business. So my social media side has been kind of hit, but because of YouTube, I've been able to still reach an audience even without the social media. So that's just my own personal experience. I would like to get better at it. And having something like this is really helpful for being able to stay organized and decide what I wanna do. Now, I would like to show while we're here I want to show an example of because in my social media, while we talk about social media, when I click on this, this is just a database with two items in here. And that's not necessarily helpful for seeing information in more than one way. So what I'm actually going to do is set up. So let's create one more. I'm going to create a new page and let's call this page. Um, actually, let's so we're going to say page. And this one will be, let's call this promotion or maybe content promotion, promotion, whatever. Let's say content promotion. So we've got a page called content promotion and let's do that little megaphone <laughs> where we are trying to tell people about all the amazing content we're putting together. This is going to be a dashboard. So I am not going to make this one database. I am going to make this full width and maybe I'll make it a bit smaller text so I can fit more on here. So this is an example where perhaps you want to, in your promotion page, you might want to have a calendar. So let's create a heading. So we'll do slash heading one. And our heading one is going to be our social media calendar. And this is where I want to have a calendar. We're going to add a linked database. So that means I'm pulling that social media calendar, which it lives somewhere else, but I'm going to pull it on this page. So let's start to type, oh, sorry create linked database. That's one way to do this. And this is my social media. So I'm going to click this database. You see a little arrow, meaning it's linked from somewhere else. And I want to see this in a calendar view. And let's say create that. And I'm actually going to delete the old view. I don't need this table view. So I'm going to say delete. So let's remove that. But I also want to have maybe a brainstorm area. And there are a couple of ways that you could do this. I personally, I really love, if you have seen any of my stuff, I like having the calendar and I like having all of the stuff that doesn't have a date beside it. And uh, so we're gonna do that again, cause that's just personally what works really well for me. I'm holding down option and I'm dragging a copy of this, except I'm gonna drag this to the right and drop it. And then we're gonna go over a little bit. And this one, instead of social media calendar, I can maybe say the, unscheduled, um, unscheduled posts or yeah, unscheduled posts. And then I can take this block. So this, this database uh, is a block and I just drag it under social media calendar. So now I have this calendar here and then under unscheduled posts, one of the things I can do is copy the link to this social media calendar and paste it here and say, create linked database. So that's another way you can have a linked database and here it defaults to a table view. Maybe I actually want to see this in a list view, which is a little bit cleaner. So let's create that and I will delete this table view. And so now I just have a list on the right here. And um, anytime we have this, it'll always be, uh, I always like, you've seen this probably before where you want to drag it over to have some more room. And this is where I will filter. So I, in this case, I'm going to say where I want date is empty because I only want stuff that has not been scheduled. That's one option. 
I don't have any that aren't scheduled. But now if I want to add a new idea, I can just say, okay, I'm going to have a post where I talk about um, how Notion made content creation easier or something like that. There's no date because I don't know when I'm going to post about it. I'm pretty sure that this is going to be maybe a Twitter thread that I share and you can start to do stuff in here or you can just grab it and uh, we can have it here. Now you can also start to get more granular, like maybe you have an actual brainstorm area. So perhaps I, let's copy this title and I'm just going to call this brainstorm because maybe I just want it to be idea phase. So we can actually take this and we can duplicate it. And that's another way where it's going to be a list view again. And it does still have that filter. So obviously the date will be empty if you're just brainstorming, but maybe I also brainstorm when I add a filter where the caption is empty. There's no caption. I have not actually said anything yet. Uh, I haven't, this isn't prepared. And maybe this one we filter where the caption is not empty. So maybe the unscheduled posts are things where they're kind of ready to go and ready to get scheduled. But the brainstorm is where I'm just dropping all my ideas. So, and this is just one example of the ways that you can sort of leverage the fact that you can filter things separately and add your ideas to the brainstorm. But once you actually work in them, then they'll show up here. So let's say we have this idea. Let's add one more idea of uh, Notion hacks. And this is just a brainstorm. I have another one that's called um, mm -mm, Notion for knitting. And so we've got some ideas. We don't have where they're going to live yet, but when I say, okay, I'm going to actually talk about Notion Knitting and my caption is, um, you know, make your knitting easier with these five steps. And I would actually list the five steps and all of that stuff. Once that's ready, it's now going to go from the brainstorm into an unscheduled post. You could have other criteria on here, but I'm just trying to get you to think about the ways that you can set up this promotion page to actually help you with the, the process of going through this information. Um, hopefully, does that, let me know if you're here live, does that make sense? Do you have other ideas? I would actually love to, what else would you like to see on your content promotion page? And I'm just gonna take another sip of water. I'm just looking at the chat and I see um, that Matt's saying, super cool. I'm afraid to go down the rabbit hole. I need to go back and watch the first two parts. So I would, yeah, there's a rabbit hole element. However, <laughs> I think if you, and maybe someone who's watched the first couple can actually share this with you. But I would say if you decide to get started with Notion and maybe just pick one thing. So as a content creator, and I'm putting out regular content, maybe just focus. I'm just going to organize content creation. That's where I'm going to start. That's my focus for now. And then you just go there. Great. Just tell you, give yourself those boundaries and say, I'm just going to focus on content. And until I actually get that system set up, then maybe I can put my mind to other ways that I could use Notion and just for now. And that's what I did when I first started is I actually had... Um, so my first foray into Notion was that I needed to reach out to some people about my workshops and I set a target where I said, I am going to create a customer relationship management. So I created a database with contacts that I was going to reach out to or people I'd already been in talks with. And then I was going to track that. I think I had to reach out to at least 12 different contacts on my list about my workshops. And I think I had four people who were past clients that I wanted to ask for testimonials. And then I had a little testimonials database. And I said, you cannot build anything until you do this work. And I actually did. Um, I don't know. <laughs> you can actually see them a little over my shoulder. So I have two mason jars with some marbles in them. And I had my like 16 marbles. And each time I reached out to someone, I moved the marble so I could see exactly how much, <laughs> how many more marbles I had to move before I could actually go back and 
start building some more. But the other parameters, which I think I mentioned before, is things like don't build during your workday. If you have regular sort of work hours and you have work you have to be doing, don't build during the day. Maybe build on the weekend or carve out some time in the evening as if you're taking a course, but you're actually just spending some time getting organized. Or I think someone said this last week, maybe book a day, book book off a Friday, book off a Monday, something like that. Or maybe if you have a couple of days where you can just say, okay, I'm going to take these days and I'm going to build this and I'm going to get organized and I'm going to set it all up and just kind of do a little bit of a concentrated period. That can be really helpful, but I would do it in stages because you'll also get used to kind of working with the tool. Um, and again, it, it might not be the right one for you. Now I saw a, um, okay, so just make, going back into the chat here, I will try, yeah. Um, excellent model for inspiration, valuable investment of time. Oh, thank you, Yogi Chandler, Chander, not Chandler. Um, okay, so Monica, let's see this question. What do you think about creating recurring tasks through the template button for social media if you always create the same kinds of posts for each piece of content? Absolutely. I would say just try it out. And that's what's nice about Notion is you could try a template where you say, you know, recurring content or recurring social media tasks. So every time you have to, you have to create your image, let's say it's for Instagram, you're creating your image post, maybe you're creating a corresponding story, you have to write your caption, you want to select your hashtags. So that, and then maybe you have a checkbox for just, maybe you schedule it and you have, you track that and then maybe it's published. Maybe you have a task or you have a recurring task where you go back in and make sure that you're going and replying to people who've asked. Maybe you set up a little poll or engagement piece on your story for that. So absolutely, I think that's a great idea. Maybe that's one of the reasons <laughs> that I've been struggling with my social media ever since I changed my direction in January. But you could you could 100% do that. I would say just like last week when we talked about content tasks is that you could have a little checklist that you just refer to that you don't actually check off or you could go and attach them using the template button or um, putting them in a, in a database. So let's actually, that's a good example. So let's say that at the top of this page, I'm going to create a block. I'm going to create a toggle that can be hidden. And I'm just going to, I'm going to make this bold. So I did command B or control B and we could call this the social media creation process. So I have this and maybe I want to make it a color or something like that. So maybe I'll make this purple. So at the top of my page, I have this toggle, which I can keep hidden or I can put this down and let's create some, um, some tasks. So maybe I have got a little to-do list where the very first thing that I want to do is decide the caption. I'm just making this up. Maybe you then have to create image and it depends on you. But for me, I would create the image in Canva. You have to choose hashtags. So this is an example of just getting your brain right. Or what are the things that you actually have to do? Um, decide call to action. If you have a call to action, um, the, what else did I say that you have to do? And you could also have this go across. So maybe I want to create columns so I can just drag this over to the, oops, I want it to be in here. Oh, in a toggle. Okay. Let's actually, I'm going to take these out of the toggle for a moment. I'm going to put these below the toggle. And then I think I have to create these separately. So if I create, did it, no, that didn't work. <laughs> okay, wait. Decide call to action. There we go. And maybe we have choose choose icons. I'm just creating these columns. So now I have the columns. So now let's try. I think. Oh, I think they disappear when we drag them up. Let's try this. They disappeared. Let's actually go. I just did undo. I think you have to make them in a page. So this is a weird thing where I, I think this is how you do it. I'm going to create a new page because some of you will want columns in a toggle. Oh, you can't see this. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, okay. You totally flanked out there 
and I did not look at the chat. So now we're back on the screen. What I did is I created, you're just watching me work, but not actually seeing my work. So what I did is I created a little toggle, social media content creation process. And I was trying to drag these to-do lists into the toggle. And what happens is, so let's actually, I'm going to delete this page. So I've got this toggle. I have these columns and I, when I try and drag them up, the columns go away. So I'm doing this by memory. So I said undo and I create a page. And so I, I say, you know, new page and the page is going to be called, um, I'm just going to call this holding spot because we're going to get rid of it. So I've got this new page. I go back. I'm going to drag these into this page and now I'm going to actually have to recreate them. So I'm going to make a column here. I'm going to make a column here and then I'm going to drag this. So I've got two columns and then I am going, <laughs> yeah, I was in the zone. So now I've got these and when I go back to, con I'm pretty sure that when I turn this into text, now I've got columns and I'm going to just delete. Oh, nope. Can't delete all of it. Okay. So now I've got, <laughs> and if anyone's like, I don't want to do this. What are you doing? Just ignore this part. And maybe you could have a nice little just columns on its own that aren't in a toggle. But what I did is just kind of brought in the text from the page by turning the page into text. It brought in everything that was on the page and it kept those columns. And then here you can see the column. I could kind of drag this over a little bit to make this tighter. But now I can have a little drop down because maybe I don't always want to see this at the top of my content promotion page. But as you're getting started and getting used to it, you could say, okay, these are the things I have to do. You could kind of keep going. Um, the alternative would be just having these maybe listed at the top or in your template. So if I say, because it might be different. So this is a template called new IG post. And this is where you could actually just have your to-do list oh, to do. And this is where you could say, you know, create image, et cetera, um, caption, hashtags. So that's another example that you could do is just have it in, in your template. And then that way, anytime you say, okay, now I'm going to do a new Instagram. And actually this one, let's edit this and add an icon. So I'm creating a template for my social media calendar. I am going to upload my Instagram icon, which you can also grab from a web. And I'm putting that here. So every time, and then here, I know this is going to be Instagram. So I can say it's an Instagram post. And now if I say new IG post, I click it, it's going to populate with the icon. It's going to already have this on here. And then this is maybe where I say, you know, notion hacks. And then I can make sure as I do these, I can check these off. And every time you have a new one. So now I go and I create a new IG post and this one will be, um, oh wait, I didn't, so that's, I don't know why I didn't adopt that. So now it's got the Instagram post. It is populating the to-do list, the picture, and then this one is going to be maybe the habit tracking. And then I can, you see that these have, oh, I, du I duplicated it. I got to, <laughs> I was too impatient to let it go. So now we have the habit tracking. So it will just keep on doing that. Now these don't have a date and they don't have a caption. So they're showing up in my brainstorm because they're not assigned, they're not populated. Okay, so um, are there any other questions or, did, oh, here, I see a question. Um, okay, I've, I see a few things. So I, so I see here, chunk it down, scale as you go, yes, do that. There's no, there's, I wanna say there's no rush um, because you can kind of adapt as you go. And yes, there are so many things you can learn, but you've got lots of time to learn them and just focus on the things that you need. And let's, see. oh, my microphone. Yes, I have a Shure MV7. Now, here we go. So is it possible to automate posting to the social media channels directly from Notion with the content? So yes, with the new Notion API, um, the integration it currently works with a few different tools like Zapier um, and automate.io. I have seen some people who have, so if you go onto, 
like if you search, for example, Twitter or Reddit or something and say Notion API send social media or automate social media, you will see examples. Right now it's so new, it's just over a week old. So people are testing it, but I did see somebody who had um, a page set up where, let's let's see if we go down here. Actually, okay. I'm gonna bring this empty block down here. They had a little column, so maybe there was a heading, which another little trick, if you do hashtag, one hashtag is heading one. Wait, hold on. Why aren't you working right now? <laughs> okay, great when my trick doesn't work. Um, Anyway, we're gonna do a heading. So let's say the heading says um, prep. Let's say prep post. And then there was another heading, which was, I'm gonna drag this beside. And then this one was actually um, send. Send to social. This is just, I'm just kind of, this is a mock-up of what they did. So they had, their post would be over here and it could be in a table or it could just be a page. So let's say we just had, um, there are two different areas though. They're not the same database. So let's say this would be, I'm gonna say send to social. This was a specific database and we're gonna do an inline database that is maybe just a table. And we can actually call this send to social. And this database was connected through the API. So it was integrated. So they set up in the back end and say, maybe it's um, a Zap using Zapier. You could say when something new is added to this database, it, send this to Instagram or send this to Twitter. I can't remember exactly which one. I think it was Twitter that I saw. Um, and so what would happen is you have, let's say it's a page. And so I create, or this is a separate table. I'm For now, I'm just gonna do an example of a page where this is your actual post. And I don't know, you would have to map it. And I don't know enough, I probably shouldn't go into detail about this, but let's say I have, um, you know, Notion Hacks is the name of my post. Actually, this would be a database. Sorry, everyone. I am, I'm gonna create a new one. And this is going to be a database. This is going to be a table. And this will be maybe called pending posts so that I can have all the different categories. So maybe this would be caption. And um, I don't know if you can do pictures with it yet. But let's say that you had the post and the caption. You could then, as soon as you drag this, so if I say Notion Hacks, and I'm just thinking through this live, and then the caption is, you know, Today I'm sharing my favorite Notion hacks, etc. And so you've got the caption here. Oh wait, this is, should be text. And it just disappeared. <laughs> this is my caption. So when I drag this from pending into send to social, oh no wait, I just dragged out his page. If I drag this and you wanna see the bar, now, the integration that you set up, the Zap that you set up or automate that you, automation that you set up will see that there's a new one and it will automatically send this to your platform and it would, um, but you would have to map it in the background. So you can look up, there are videos on how to use the Notion API. It is in beta. Also, it's not intent, Notion was not built to be a scheduler for your social, but now that there's an integration, it can start to do that. So if you are preferring to use Notion as your way to stay organized, there is an option now. Okay. So yeah, and I, I Patrick is saying, I, I doubt you can do photos as of now. It's not, it's unsupported in the API. Yeah, that was my experience when I was practicing. Um, so I created a form using type form and then I connected it to Notion and it pulled everything except the photo. So I did, I had a, on the form, you could upload your, your like headshot and that sent to Dropbox, but it did not send to the, 
the Notion database, which was disappointing, but that's just not an option right now. So you, you would probably only want to use this for something like a tweet where you don't actually have photos. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, and thank you, JV. I, I'm very excited about reaching 2000 subscribers. And Matt is saying, give me a few ideas. I'm still a little nervous, but I'm going to give it a go. Well, that's really exciting. And let me know <laughs> if you have questions. Okay. So this is, um, now I want to show you another example. So I'm going to get rid of this. So let's actually just grab these because that was a little just mental experiment about the API, but maybe you actually do want to have an, another way to organize your information and let's do a board view. So I'm going to create a linked database. And in this case, I'm going to copy the link to my social media database and down here, I'm going to paste it and say, create linked database, but we're going to have a board view. And something that we are going to do is say by status. Now we have to set up a status because I didn't actually give it a status. So let's open any one of these and we are going to create a new column called status because maybe you are, maybe this is how you want to organize your social media posts and this will be a single select. So this is where we're really incorporating this Kanban idea where maybe it's just an idea and then your status goes to a draft and then maybe you go to you know, draft, maybe complete, or maybe we'll say ready, ready, meaning ready for publication. And then perhaps you have scheduled, which won't always apply. And then finally you have published. All right, so that's an example where you have your status. So now we've created all those different status, statuses. Yeah, it's not status I. <laughs> so this is an idea. And now we want to change if we go over here and we say group by status. So this is, I think would be really helpful. Now we want to hide this, but first let's say that these are in draft form, that these are ready to be posted and maybe these are actually already scheduled and then we can hide, hide that. So this is an example where you can see all of your social media in one place. What are your ideas? What are your drafts? Which ones are ready to be posted? Which ones are scheduled and which ones are published? And after those are published, you can easily just drag that over here. If, uh, no, I'm not going to go there. That's API stuff. So you can also add ideas just by doing this. So if I said, oh, I want to have an idea where I talk about the um, API with type form and share about my experience there. Now, when I open this, it'll already be in the status of idea. And maybe I want idea to be a little bit higher up. And this is going to be a new Instagram post. So you can see how this is another great way to organize your the, the process that you go through for organizing information. Has anyone noticed that I am flip-flopping between process and process? All right. Um, okay. So that's another example. And let's go back to this planning dashboard and clean this up a little bit. So I am going to create one more column. This is going to be a... So there's a few ways that you can do this. <laughs> For now, I'm going to tidy this up with a toggle. So the shortcut... So you can either say start to type toggle and have a toggle list. That's one way. And I'm just going to say related tables and because these are all of my sort of related areas. And I'm going to drag these into the toggle. So that's one way. Now, if I toggle it open, you can see all of these areas, um, content promotion, content tasks. These are things that I want to be able to go to quickly in related tables. You could either have it up here or because I don't use this as much, I can actually just kind of drag this down maybe to the bottom of my page. I can even sort of separate it with a divider. So if I say I want to have a divider here on top of related tables and then I'm going to duplicate it, hold down option or alt. So I've just kind of tucked it away at the bottom because most of these tables, I'm not going to necessarily go into them this way or maybe I am and I want this to be at the top. And maybe I say, actually, I do want to be able to jump into my guest area really easily. So I might take this one out of this toggle and then 
put this up here and then under guests, let's pick a is it users. What's the one where they have two people? Here we go. Maybe I have that. So at the top of my content planning dashboard, I now have um, some of the stuff that I want to jump to my tasks. I want to jump to my promotion. I want to jump to my guests page really quickly. And then here, this is where you kind of set it up. What's the way that you like to see your information? Um, and you can create columns if you want. So maybe I want to drag this over beside tasks. And I've got, so I've got my tasks, my promotion, my guests, and you can have something else underneath guests. So this is how you're sort of creating this dashboard. And depending on how you interact with your information, you can always jump into different areas. So I think, let's take a look. We've got choosing related databases. So we had some examples of your guests. You could do sponsors, B-roll, music, et cetera, all sorts of examples. We talked about relationship versus tag. So do you actually want it to link to another table or do you want to just use a tag so you can easily sort information or a combination of both? And then we talked about social media tracking. And as we saw here, you can create this little another type of dashboard. You can have your content creation kind of tucked away here. You can set up a few different items here and you can jump down. Now I'm going to show you one more thing before I wrap up today, which is to be able to jump down to something. Um, and maybe you like this more and you actually want this to be at the top of your page. You can absolutely do that. Um, actually, let's do another example where I'm going to say social posts by status as a toggle. And we are going to bring this up to the top. I dropped it in here. So now you could actually have, and maybe this is a slightly different color. Maybe this one is going to be pink. You could say, okay, what are, what's the status on these? And I think you can also for properties, I can make this card size a little bit smaller. So it fits a little bit better. So now I can see all of these a bit more easily. So that's an example where maybe you want to see your calendar and what are the dates you're going to publish it. But you also maybe each time you come in, you want to be able to see, OK, what's the status of all of these? Or maybe you don't hide it and maybe this is always at the top, but this will start to get longer. This is a really small example. As you start to add things, this will go longer and longer and longer. So you can pick where you have it or the alternative is if you wanted to be able to jump to something down lower, like let's say that you had something down here and I've got, we'll just do a heading example um, that this is, I, I don't know. <laughs> let's think, this is another category of your social media. I'm running out of ideas. <laughs> um, but you have a little table down here. Maybe your content is organized in a different way so we can take this social media calendar. Let's copy the link to this calendar. We're going to put another linked database and we're, we, we've sorted it somehow. What you can do is you can actually copy the link to this. This is a block. It's a heading block. Up here, maybe you actually want to, it's not a toggle, but we could actually just have like a little legend at the top and say jump to other category. <laughs> I wasn't planning to do this, which is why I have nothing. So jump to other category. We could actually just, you can copy it and you can actually paste the link or you can actually just say command or control V and you will create a hyperlink. And now at the top of this page, if you click on this, it will take you down to this part of the page. And maybe you want to have one at the bottom. Um, and actually let's create a little divider and we'll say back to top. And then we're going to create another little divider so it looks official, like it's a footer at the bottom of the page. And we want to be able to jump to the top of the page. So let's copy the link of the very first thing on our page. We'll go down here. We grab it. And we just say Control or Command V. So now when we're down here, we can just jump back to the top of the page. Um, so Monica's saying, can you show what's in your content tasks related table? Yeah. So the content tasks, if we go back to our dashboard, this is what we did in part two. And this was making this task database and having all the different tasks and then the related content. And so this was showing how we link 
between our tasks. So if I was saying, okay, what do I have to do this week in order to get ready for my upcoming content? I could come in here and actually I would probably, let's sort this by date. It's ascending. So this is the first things first. So I would be able to go in here and say, okay, I need to trim the live stream. Now these are not actually attached to anything. So I'm going to delete, delete these. Um, but you can see, okay, May 24th, I need to prep the assets for this introduction to formulas. So I could open this and I can see my different tasks, which I've already checked off. Um, and if I, but if I'm in the content, I can also see my tasks. Oh, I didn't do it for this one. <laughs> Anyhow, I think for some of them, we did have that example where I had the, the tasks in here. Here we go. Here's an example where I had, nope. <laughs> I take it back. That's the task database. It's not perfect. Um, yes. And where's the original living? Oh, the task database is down the side. So this is my actual original task database, but then I linked it under content tasks so I can see what is the upcoming task that I need. And I filtered this where the type is content creation. It's not done yet and it's within the next month. So only the things that are coming up in the next month. So that's that. All right. Okay. That concludes part three of the content creation with Notion. And I hope that it's giving you some ideas. I always, always, always encourage you to play, see what works. You can always go backwards. You can always change things. You can move things around, which I know for some people that's actually more daunting. But the reason that I love it is if you set something up and you say, this isn't working for me, you can change it. And a great example for me this week is I realized I had set up in my content database, I have the calendar so I can see exactly which, like the editorial calendar, when are these videos coming out? But I also had a different view where I would change the calendar to a table where I have all of the links to my videos. Because often someone will say, well, where was that? And I, or if I'm answering a comment, I want to grab that link and share that link. But I found it annoying to flip back and forth between the calendar and the links. So all I did on my content dashboard is just below the calendar, I just added a table where I just have the links to the videos. So now instead of flipping the view, I just scroll down and all of the links are there on the page. I do not have to toggle and switch back and forth. So that's a great example of how it's a dynamic process and you can easily add or change or amend something, change your filter, add another view. Um, that's why I love working with Notion is it's so customizable. Other, the other task managers or content dashboards, they just don't do as much. So that is why one of the reasons that I love it so much and to not be afraid of it. But as we talked about, have your boundaries, decide what you're going to do, focus on that. Don't get carried away. If you see a cool video or a post about a trick that you can do, you can always come back to it. Just save it in your ideas and you can always come back to it and learn it later. There's lots of time. I still have lots that I am going to learn about Notion and I know that there's time to learn it. So hopefully that was helpful. Thank you so much um, for those who joined me live. And if you are watching the replay, um, let me know, leave a comment. Is this helping you? Do you have any ideas um, or do you have any questions? And last week is the last one. And that is where we are going to talk about friction points, like the one I just shared. We're going to talk about how you can share pages with others. Like if you have a guest that's coming on, um, how can you make those public? How do you invite a guest? I'm going to talk a little bit about formulas, not a lot, because we could <laughs> we could go forever. Metrics. So if you have tasks assigned to your content, you can actually see how far along am I? How many? How, what percentage of tasks have I completed so far? Um, how did actually I already talked about the bulk category changes so we probably don't need that and then mobile capture all right until next week um have a great one have fun and let me know how your notion experience goes <laughs>